early contests build momentum for 2024 contenders seeking the White House. C-SPAN offers unfiltered coverage of events leading into early primaries and caucuses. Get access to speeches and results with the free app. C-SPAN now or watch live on the C-SPAN networks. Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Benedict. And I am Richard Spate. Junior. And today we're talking about season three, episode four, Sin City. How appropriate. How appropriate. We're talking about Sin City right. in a live stream after just returning from Las Vegas, which Las is Vegas. Sin City. Actual Sin City. Yeah, how great. How crazy. And we're doing this live, a streaming for our Patreon, Patreoners, Patreon listeners. Right. So uh, if you haven't joined yet on Patreon, please consider it. I like Patreoners. I think Patreoners make sense. Okay. For our Patreoners, we are doing a live stream. If you are not joining us for that live stream, that means you're not a Patreoner. It's time to clock in. Join Patreon. Be part of the party and join us for our next live stream event. You're, you're going to be glad you did. We have a ton of content up there. Continuing to add new content, video clips, images, and of course you get to watch us cry it, and scratch our way through technology. So It's, it's Patreon easy. You just go to patreon.com slash SPN then and now. It's patreonorific. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. So, Sin City. Summarize it for us, Rob. That's Wrap it all up in a couple of paragraphs. Go. All right, here we go. Just off the top of my head. The boys are helping Bobby work on the colt. They have a, co- a, a horse? Uh, no, the gun. It's a gun. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, when Sam discovers a sting, a string of violent deaths in Elizabethtown, Ohio, a small town that's been turned into a draw for gamblers, prostitutes, and drunks. Do you think people called that place Beth Town? Because, you know, people shorten Elizabeth to Beth. Sure, sure. Or, or, Liz- about, or, or Liz Town. Yeah, or Liz Town. Town. Yeah, yeah Liz Town. By the way, gamblers, prostitutes, and drunks. I bet when the town was little, they she went by Lizzie Town, and the town got older and said, hey, can you not call me Lizzie Town anymore? I, I want to go by Elizabeth Town. And then she has like a midlife crisis and she's just Bethton. Yeah, but she'll be Bethton. But also there's that aunt who just goes, oh, I'm going to stick with Lizzie Town. You've always been Lizzie Town. And Elizabeth Town at every holiday function is like, God, it drives me nuts that Agnes won't call me Elizabeth Town. I, she makes me feel like I'm nine and I'm 50. But then, you know, Elizabeth Town's older sister, Veronica Ville, was like, that, that's, <laughs> that's Aunt Agnes. So you can either love her for who she is and just go with it. Or you can fight this battle. Either way, you know, it's going to be the way it is. By the way, Veronicaville, so quaint, lovely place, if you have a chance. And Gamblers, Prostitutes, and Drunks is the name of your biography. Am I, am I wrong? You're not, it's not in the images of my family members right across the front. So anyway, they head to this town to investigate. And the brothers deduce that demons have infested the town and are using their powers to corrupt the townspeople into their vices. So Dean finds an old hunter friend in town, and that friend is Richie. That's appropriate. And, yeah, right? He's very, and he's very Richard Spate-like. You would have, if you hadn't been cast already, you would have been this guy. But it would have been a shame because he dies. And then, Yeah, that's a waste of me. Yeah. Uh, Richie seems a little over his head and is murdered by a hot bartender demon named Casey. Which, by the way, is uh, one of the ways you would like to die. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Your voice said, if I got to go, may it be at the hands of a hot bartender. bartender. A demon named Casey. <laughs> She lures Dean- Guy or girl, whatever, as long as her name is Casey. Exactly. She lures Dean into the wine cellar of her home, the place that she murdered Richie. But Dean has set a devil's trap for her there. What? However, she's powerful and makes the roof crumble, sealing the door and trapping the two of them in the basement. Could be someone's dream or someone's nightmare. So it's Rob's dream, Dean's nightmare. Right. Casey also destroys Dean's exorcism book. Dean believes Sam will get there to rescue him. Casey believes her demon allies will save her while trapped, the two form a bond. Oh, nice. So yeah, Casey shares with Dean a little about the hierarchy of demons. Who Azazel was, that all demons believe in Lucifer as a higher power, and that demons have been in chaos since the Devil's Gate was opened back in Wyoming. During the whole time, Bobby has been working on the cult. The horse? No, the cult. It's the oh. gun. It's a gun. Trying to figure out how to get it to work again. Ruby shows up and helps Bobby with the gun. Sam goes to the local priest to try and get more info on Casey. I bet he does. And the four of them show up at Casey's house. Suddenly, the priest attacks them. What? He's a demon. Yeah. The the priest? priest, The whole time. The whole priest. The whole time. It's been the priest. The priest clears a path through the debris and attacks Dean. The priest frees Casey and makes out with her in a gross kiss, revealing the two demons have been lovers for centuries. Casey asks the priest to not kill Dean. Suddenly, Sam shows up with the colt. The horse? No, the gun, still a gun, and kills the priest and Casey. So 
Out of curiosity, was it Sam or the 1960s uh, singer Sam the Sham? Because <laughs> the way you Sam. said it, you're like... <laughs> it was Sam. Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester. So after the deaths of the demons, the town hasn't really changed. Dean is worried that Sam is turning into a killer. Yeah. Ruby congratulates Sam on killing the demons. He threatens to kill her with the colt. The horse? The gun. But she reminds him that she may be Dean's only salvation. Oh, man. Yeah. And Sam gets on that colt and rides into the sunset. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, are you ever starters? Let's talk about the episode. Let's just let's just get into what I like to call the review of the episode. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> it's a good episode. It's a great episode. A lot going on there. The whole the way they set up the whole city being a cesspool, I think was mm-hmm. really well done. Mm-hmm. I thought the guy who played the priest was really good. And I mean, even though you know there's gonna be a twist in a supernatural episode, he did a good job of not not tipping his hand at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess the one thing would be he was constantly in the bar. Like, like, yeah, I mean, that was, a, you know, but it was really well done because, like, at first, uh, that first scene where someone dies, shoots himself in the church. Right. And he's, like, shocked. He's oh, like, yeah. You know? And so you're like, oh, well, this that's a friendly priest. Yeah. And then you also feel like he has genuine concern for the parishioners. Because, you know, when they go yeah. interview him, he talks about the other people who are having yeah. a tough time. and yeah. You know? Yeah, and they set up that owner of the bar as like sort of this ominous figure hanging out in the corner. You're like, oh, that guy. It's that yeah, guy. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. That guy. Yeah, and then they're the cops, the guys, the detectives, or whatever co- cops that are following them. Yeah, and then there's that scene where Jared goes, Sam goes in and punches them up, and it turns out they're they're totally <laughs> benevolent guys. Oh, when you, when you mean when he's tr- robbing the their office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, we're Does- gonna report you to the authorities. Like, wait, you are? You're not gonna burn me to? Yeah, burn doesn't me he to like? Death? Does he punch one or is he something? He goes, he breaks into the office. You're talking about going and breaking into the office yeah. of the guy, we, yeah, of the bar owner. And it's not like they're benevolent dudes. It's just that he breaks in thinking they're demons. And when they when they apprehend him and bust him, they're just like normal people. You know, they're not demons. They're just saying, we're going to call the police and you're going to get a breaking and entering charge. And Sam's like, wait, you're not going to, you know, show me black eyes and have me burst into flames? You know, he had a gun aimed at him. He's like, I'm not, I'm not going to kill a couple of civilians, you know? Yeah, I thought he would like, hit one or something because then he feels really bad. He's like, Ooh. He might have. He might. I can't remember that. I, I, honestly, I, I, I watched, watched this it. before oh, Christmas. Yeah, me too. So I can't remember that detail, but I do remember that like he was aiming a gun at them, and then he takes yeah. the weapon, the 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 bullets out, and puts the gun down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and he definitely. throws holy water at him. That's what it is. And they're like, "What in the heck is wrong with you?" Yeah, I think he smacks one up too. <laughs> they probably but, do. I mean, yeah. you know, for the sake of this, we'll say yes. Yeah. So. That scene was cool. I thought, I thought the the dean getting hit on by the prostitute was funny. Yeah, like, yeah, that was funny. Let's and go, then, yeah, three hundred bucks, and we're out of here. And then the character is the uh, Jared's old friend, or is it Jensen's old friend, Richie? This is gonna like, hey, yeah. we're gonna yeah. go. The, yeah, it was, it was great. It was, I, you know what I really liked is that the the scene between the bartender and Jensen. I thought that that was a really cool section of the episode where it was super a, cool. Almost played out like a play where they have a really long scene together and they they develop this bond. I you really buy it. There's a chemistry between the two of the actors and I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. I did too, and I also thought that it was the first time, at least maybe not the first time, but the first time I can recall right now, where we're sort of seeing, for lack of a better term, the humanity of the demons. Like the demon right. is sort of telling us a story about what's really going on there and all right. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's well, again, it's one of those episodes you're like you don't know where it's going. You really don't know what to, what you're watching at first. Right. Who's the who's the bad guy? Where's the trouble? What's going on? Right. And then at the end of the episode, it all comes together, right? The cult being fixed, and the and Ruby and Sam Dean and demons and everything. It all kind of comes together at the end. Right. So so where does that leave you from a facial hair perspective? Well. Look, is it the, like the best episode in the whole catalog? No, but it's a really solid episode. I really liked it a lot. Right. So I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it about what I've got right now, which is a good, like a. Oh it's wow, a, that's not. A, I mean, look, you got a solid, good looking beard, but that's like well, but that's like not a big. That's not a. So that's not a good review, really. It's an okay review, but it's not a, like if if your if your '70s logins is your like big. This is two steps back from that. Is that is that a fair assessment? I'm going to change my thing then, because and you've just put put down my face, but uh, no, because you don't have, you have a you have a thin beard now. You have, you don't have a big thing. Like, I'm like I'm going to give it what I have now. Oh wow, you really didn't like the episode. <laughs> it's a facial hair measurement. Um, okay, if we're going on the logins, 
then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 80s logins, not 70s logins. Okay, that's fair. A- I think we're a- think, I think we're thinking the same thing about this episode. I'm. I am not gonna go Stapleton. This is not gonna Chris Stapleton. Mm-hmm. But it gets a Zach Galifianakis from Hangover. Oh well, that's timely. Because- yeah, I'm gonna go with the Zach Galifianakis from the Hangover beard, which is a nice trimmed beard. Uh, looks good, but not not a statement like the Stapleton beard is. Right. That's yeah. Good. So they're good, solid reviews. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to Loggins from the 80s when he got a little bit, you know, it wasn't quite the like rugged 70s yeah, Loggins. Little, the, like, little, little quaff. Sort of, sort of, and sort of a smoky, yeah. you know, smoky uh, lens, make it look like a like a prom photo. Yeah, but anyway, solid. And it's, it's funny you say uh, hangover because uh, our interview coming up next, but not right now, but next in the podcast, right, is with Sasha Paris. Who was in all the Hangover movies? Barresi. Barresi. Sasha Barresi. Si. Yeah, uh, she was in all three Hangover movies. I didn't even, I didn't even draw the analogy. Oh my god, that's great. So there we go. All right, Sasha Barresi has appeared in all three Hangover movies and films. Films such as Let Me In, Jezebel's Kiss in the Ring. She has had numerous TV guest spots on shows such as CSI Miami, Drive, Carpoolers, and Just Shoot Me. It's such a pleasure to have her on the show. Please welcome Sasha Brace. Hi, Sasha. Thank you. Hi. Hi. It's good to be here. Nice to see you. Okay. Well, listen, I mean, obviously we're dipping back into the vault here with with Memories of Supernatural, a show you shot long ago in the fledgling moments of your career. But I'm curious, what do you remember about the experience, positive or negative? Like, what what do you recall? Well, I had tested for the show for a bigger part, and I didn't get the role. Do you remember which part that was? You know, I don't know. I haven't seen too many of it. I know it got an English actress they ended up hiring. Oh, yes. It was uh, Lauren Cohen. Lauren Cohen. The role that she played. She, I mean, she's English in real life. Okay, so it was probably that. And the writers actually contacted me a few weeks later, and they they wrote this episode for me. Wow. So. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I had no idea. So yeah, cool. it was super cool. That's great. Um, yeah. And then they they sent it to my house. I read it and just loved it because it was it was like doing a play. Yeah, so. it really was that you get that great long scene with Jensen. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. That's awesome. And so yeah. did you, had you met Jensen or Jared before you got to set? Uh, never. I don't even think that they were at the test. So no. Okay. And then, so you just kind of came to set day one and you met Jensen before you started shooting that scene. Yes. Okay. That's super cool. I don't think I've ever heard that in, in our, so Rob and I have been involved in the show for a long time. I don't think I've ever heard of uh, one of the actors getting an episode written for them. I'm kind of circling back to that. That's Yeah, really cool. it was really cool. I mean, maybe they tailored it a little bit or maybe they just. But whatever. The point is like they, they obviously, if you tested for a role, they knew you, they knew your work. They liked you enough to want to put you up against the final people for a thing. And it, you have a big enough impact where they're like, well, it didn't go that way, but let's figure out a way to work, work her into the sauce, which is smart if you want to use talented people right for the talented people you have access to. Yeah. I mean, everyone is so talented on that set. They're really incredible. The actors are, they're just phenomenal. Yeah. It means so easy for them. Every scene, every take is a little bit different. They can literally look at the paper and know their lines right away, no matter how long it is. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Did you recall, obviously Vancouver's weather brings issues, but I don't think you get a lot of outdoor stuff or anything. Was there anything about the experience that you found challenging or difficult or, I mean, right now we're singing the praises of these dudes, which of course we do all the time, but was there anything about it that you found to be a bit of a hiccup or a a challenge? No, not at all. I was actually really excited to see Vancouver because I don't think I'd been to Canada before and downtown's really interesting there. We did do a night shoot as I'm walking into the house. But no, it was it was super easy. There was no no problems on set. Just went pretty flawless. And you mentioned it being like a play. So to that end, because it, because the because of the length of the scenes and the intensity of the scenes and the fact that they are largely one on one, shot it consecutively. Really? Which was, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that also never happens. Holy yeah. smokes! Checking new boxes. Yeah. Did you did you and Jensen get to talk about it at all? Did you get to work on it? Obviously, you were on set. I don't mean like previous to that, but. Did you have time to step out to the trailers and run the material? Was there any sort of pre-gaming at all? About, with we this ran one? it a little bit on set when we were in the basement. We would just run it a couple times just before. But we pretty much both had the characters down, I think. 
it was he was great to work with. Yeah, he is. He's awesome to work with. It's so well. I love the part too because at the beginning you're just the bartender, so you're like you're not quite sure, but like I don't know something about your gaze. You're like we're coming back to this one, and then it winds up being this incredible guest star where you're like you've got the, the whole second half of the episode. You've got this great scene with him. In in that scene, you deliver a lot of like mythology about the show. I don't yes. know how much you remember, but at the time, were you familiar with Supernatural? Other than you, you tested, but they- besides reading the scripts, I was not. Yeah. So I actually, when I was on set and I, they were like, oh yeah, your eyes go black. You have to do the demon eye thing now. And it was like, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I had no, I had no idea. I'd never seen it before. Never, never anything. But it blew my mind how good it was. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing. And even again, we always are, are wowing by what they were able to pull off then. I mean, we're talking about 17 years ago, you know, yeah. or, you know, 15 were you, years Was ago. it yeah. uh, contacts or did they digitally do it? For the black eyes. Uh, they digitally did it, but yeah, I think they digitally did okay. it. Yeah. But there's like, you know, you have to hold them open and I'm pretty sure they digitally did it. Okay. Born contacts before, but I don't think I did for the, Oh, maybe. No. I feel like you'd remember because when, when people have come into the show to say they wore any kind of contact, they're like, it was a hellscape nightmare. <laughs> so I feel oh, like I if you're not remembering the discomfort. Uh, I used to wear contacts that are oh. easy for me to put on, but gotcha. um, I'm pretty sure it was digital. Okay. I have shown it to my kids. I showed my kids the episode. Oh, yeah. And they were like, <laughs> how, how old are your kids? Uh, they're eight now. They're twins. Oh, sweet. Well, okay. Was it weird kissing the priest? It was a little weird. Yes. Because we hadn't really worked together or had any lines right, together yeah. or anything. It was just like a big kiss right away. Yeah. And then, and then that was it. Yeah. So. Rob, have you ever I kissed know, a priest? I've never kissed a priest. No, <laughs> not in my work. Because I was going to say it is weird, but, but I guess if you, have, I mean, I could draw that analogy, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's it's, yeah. I guess that's just the nature of of doing. You know, it's sort of a classic TV thing that I think people who are not in the industry don't ever connect. Is that sometimes it's like, "Hello, how are you? Let's make out <laughs> the elevator." Like, you know, it's like, "It's nice to meet you." How do you pronounce your name? Let's fall. <laughs> you know, um, I think I felt bad too from like an acting perspective because because I'd just been there with Dean the whole time in the basement. And kind of, we really kind of got along and right. suddenly kind of felt like a little bit of a betrayal in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. So, even though I like mauled the priest, it felt like an awkward thing to do at the time. Well, sure, because here you are bonding with Dane and then you bring in this dude. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. I thought, we were, okay. yeah. I thought we had something going here. Of course, I feel bad for the guy <laughs> playing the priest. He's like, hey, guys. <laughs> what wow. <did> I miss? <laughs> <laughs> There's one moment where you 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 lunge at Dean and you're snap, snapped back into the circle do you remember yeah. was that were you on a harness? I think I was on a harness. And also when I got shot, I think I was on a harness. Mm -hmm. I remember working with the the day before I started shooting on what the you know the cap was gonna be when I get shot, you know, the explosion explosives that they have to put there. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, uh, and, and working on harness. I think I just won and then I think it snapped me back. So I guess you would call that a harness. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. In my book, it's yeah. a harness. Yeah, that's that, that's what that yeah. would be. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the... Hey, this is Richard Spate. You know what? It's 2024. It's a brand new year. And I bet you made some New Year's resolutions. And I bet one of them was to eat healthier. Well, you can get cranking on that resolution right now, my friend, with Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, the cooking fatigue. I'm getting tired just talking about it. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you will have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart this resolution off right. Forget frantic lunch prep and rush dinner making. That stinks. Factors two-minute meals, yes, I said two minutes, are your secret weapon in the new year. You get to fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals all delivered right to your door. It doesn't get any easier than that. And Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep you going no matter what's on the schedule. So I know what you're asking. Rich, how do I tap into this Factor magic? You head to factormeals.com slash SPNTAN50 and use code SPNTAN50 to get 50% off. 
That's a lot off. That's code SPN TAN50 at factormeals.com slash SPN TAN50 for 50% off. Make that resolution happen now and make it happen at a discount. Fantastic food that's healthy and delicious and delivered right to my door. Now that is how you start the new year off right. Episode, but we need to pull over for a second for some messages. And also I have to tickle. Thanks for listening, everybody. And now back to the episode. That episode is really, really, really intensely different, I think, than a lot than a large large uh, number of the supernatural episodes because the entire city is in on the gag, if you yeah. will. Like it looked, maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like it would be fun to do those bar sequences too. They looked big and sprawling and, you know, potentially challenging from a from an execution standpoint, but also fun because people having kind of fun in that space. What was that like? Uh, it was great. I think I had done bar scenes previously, but you, you forget that everyone needs to be totally silent. And they're yeah. walking around and moving, yeah, and then totally. uh, you know, then they get right. the ambient noise later on, right. and like we put it in. But it's it was especially in a bar scene where they're pretending to like totally. cheers, and, and it's and like mind yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Mine. And you have to pretend you're talking above the noise, even though there's no noise. Yeah, yeah. And so did you? You shot that first. Yeah, that's so great. Right first, yeah. And now Charles Beeson. I don't know if you recall the director specifically, I do. but. Do did, you? Yeah. He was great. So how was working with Charles? He was awesome. He just let us do our thing. He would listen to a run through and then just go, yeah, that works. I think it's challenging as an actor when you're, you can't do a lot of actions and it right. still needs to be interesting, you know, because we're stuck sure. in this basement and there's not a lot that we could do. I was stuck in the circle in the basement too. Right. He still made it look interesting. It, yeah. it just worked. Wow. Yeah. He's uh he was one of the, one of the great ones uh, and certainly one of the best supernatural had directed some of the some of the best episodes of the show and i acted in an episode he did after that he similar situation where it's three of us standing in a triangle (laughs) and it looks amazing like he he does wonderful work with the camera when you're unable to move he will do the movement for you in something some creative way and he did that really effectively with you two in that and and he's really hands off too he's really like he like listens to how you want to do it. And I remember he did make a couple suggestions that were good ones, but I can't, it's been so long, well, 15 years. Even that you remembered what yeah, you've sure. remembered, I think is really impressive. Like, I <laughs> Well, I think it speaks, I also think it speaks to A, the, the experience, but also, I mean, largely I think TV directors don't always get their fair. That's right. Con- yeah, they're, 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 they're fair due when it comes to like executing these episodes and Beeson. I think it speaks volumes yeah. that you remember him, that you recall the experience of working with him, but that, that speaks to his impact on the scene and sort of like the connection you felt with him or whatever, whatever resonated with you. I think that's cool. Yeah. He, he had a really calming presence. He kind of reminds me of, I worked with a uh, Gore, Gore Verbinski on um, the ring and it was kind of the same type deal. It was a scene that took like two days to shoot where no one really moved, where we were outdoors. And he just kind of watched. And how, what was your experience like working with him? I thought it was amazing. So Charles, I, I, the scene I had that I'm referring to was a very long, went over an act break, kind of just three people talking. And it was me sort of revealing this. I'd done our previous episodes as this one character. And now I was revealing that I was somebody else. And... Everybody, like you say, Jared and Jensen knew their lines like the back of their yeah. hand. And I'd done my homework. So we all knew our material. And he was doing these cool, like sweeping cameras along the ground. And to your point, he just watched and shot the play. And then he came in, specifically gave one note. Yeah. And the one note was brilliant. You remember and it? changed the tenor I wish of the second I remember half of the, scene. the note he gave me because I remember it was brilliant. Yeah. There was a, so there was, I remember the note he gave to our scene. And it was, it was, uh, it was just so small. But it was, and it was directed at something I was doing, but it changed the tenor of how I said something and, and intended something and it, which changed their response. So it just put the domino at a different angle and knocked over a different row. And it was really, really, really cool. That's awesome. And like you say, he was sort of a British gentleman about the whole thing. Just calm. Yeah. For all I know, we were up against it and the clock was running out and we were in trouble, but you'd never know from looking at that. Totally. Guy. He, he, totally. he, uh, I never got to work with him, but he directed some of the, you know, some of the memorable supernatural episodes. He did, uh, French Mistake, which everyone always talks about. And yeah. he did, uh, 
Changing Channels, the, your episode, Rich, that also very popular. Right. And this one was great. Sasha, have you ever been to any of the conventions or interacted with the fandom at all? I have not. I have interacted with some fans, definitely. I mean, I wish I'd gone to one of the conventions. It must have just been so much fun. Well, here's Newsflash. They're still happening. So there's still a chance. They're oh, still really? going. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rich and I just got back from Las Vegas where there was a convention. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to get you at one of them. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of. Do you ever have them in the Bay Area? What's that in the Bay Area? Yeah, we do San Francisco. You, yeah, yeah, I'll go yeah. do the San Francisco yeah. one. I mean, we haven't done one in years in San Francisco, but we're about to do San Francisco this in twenty twenty three. Oh, cool! Yeah. I'll I'll totally come. I would love to do that. Uh, you know what? I we will legitimately pass yeah. along that info to yeah. the people who run the convention, oh, cool. Rich, because it would be fun to have you and it'd be fun for fans to see you. Plus, it's so cool to talk to you about this role, not only because you were great in it, but honestly, you have a really cool yeah. uh, recollection. Yeah, a lot of a people lot are of like, I don't remember, it, and that's uh, nice that you remember. Yeah, I do yeah. remember one more thing. It's the first time I've Please. ever seen this. I think I think they wanted to do a quicker turnaround. So like in the union, you have to give like 10 hours from when you leave set to when you get back to set. And I feel like one of the characters was like, no, <laughs> like I want my extra two hours of sleep. <laughs> It's like, uh, yeah. that's amazing. Like, to <laughs> actually, like, be like, no, I want my extra two hours of sleep. I right. So when they, when, when they break your turnaround, everyone, they, you, you have to give permission. You go, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I'll do the forced call, you know, or you won't. Forced call. That's yeah. Right. So that's sometimes, right. usually, you know, I've, I've never heard that. Usually you're, everybody's like, okay, yeah, I'll do the forced call because they pay you extra for that, you know. And it's like a ton extra. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's like, as a get, yeah. Tired. As a guest star, you're like, yes, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How what the, you know, I know you didn't have a lot of Jared interaction. I mean, you had no. some. Did you get to connect with him at all as a as a guy? Um, no, a little bit when we were just doing some of the outside stuff, but he was super super sweet. He I is. mean, both of them were really sweet, but I remember yeah. he was particularly Yeah. very They're good. very sweet, good good gentlemen. They're good yeah. dudes, man. And you know, that's guest stars who come and go. Rob and I were guest stars on the show. You're a guest star on the show who've gone on to do other things. That's one thing people always remember is those two guys were always nice on yeah. set. Always welcoming, always warm, always kind, always yeah. prepared. Which is the, yeah. Which is, those are four things that aren't always in sync on a TV not show at set. With the not at all. Especially you know. not everyone being so nice. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, th listen, I thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. I know you uh, have you have two young children and a lot going on in your life professionally, but thank you for, for pausing it and talking to us about this thank episode. Thank you for it's having awesome. me on. I look forward to meeting you guys. In Absolutely. Hey, this is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. We are going to take a quick break. Hey, it's Jeffrey D. Morgan again. Welcome back to the podcast. Well, that was fun. It was a great, what a great interview. Dude, great interview. Yeah. Yeah, she gets it, man. She had good memory for, great for, memory. A, for a great episode. And, and I really appreciated her reflections on Charles Beeson. And again, to remind our audience, we lost Charles during COVID. He was just a gentleman director who was the producing director on Revolution, a big trusted visionary for Eric Kripke mm -hmm. and did a lot of the best earliest supernatural stuff. And he's just a great guy. And French, I thought it was really, really great of her to remember him so fondly. French Connection and Changing Channels are consistently on like the top 10 best episodes list out of 327. That's pretty good percentage for him. Not bad. Not bad work, Charles Beeson. And also it's great to see Sasha look for those that, that want to find out the work that we did together. If you have this, the, the Hangover 2 DVD. Wait, wait, you worked with her? The special features section. Why didn't you bring it up to her? I did. She didn't remember. But if, <laughs> but if you go to the, there's a documentary we did. It's a mockumentary, The Making of Hangover 2. And I entered in it, I playing somebody else, playing this documentarian, I interviewed Sasha. And we just had, we had a lot of laughs. And, uh, and one of these days, someone will remember. She laughed herself into uh, amnesia because she had no recollection of the event. Well, I'd say maybe she doesn't have a good memory, but we just saw that she had a great, great memory. So uh, anyway, uh, well, hey, let's get in the mythology. Mythology, mythology, mythology. This is the first time we hear the name Azazel. The name appears in ancient texts of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In Judaism, Azazel was a goat cursed to carry the sins of Jews and was cast out into the desert on Yom Kippur. 
I don't know why that's a curse. He's the greatest of all time. <laughs> the goat. He's the goat. In Christian and Muslim traditions, Azazel was one of the angels cast out by God along with Lucifer. So, for example, if I got banned from a convention for doing something inappropriate <laughs> and they said, and by the way, we're also no longer hiring Rob, you know, maybe you're the bathwater, Rob's the Azazel of this scenario. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting cast out, but Rob, you know what? You're gone too. Even though you didn't <laughs> do anything wrong, you're gone. Um, ironically, I play God, so I'm casting myself out. Weird. You know, me too. I'm out. The Dead Sea Scrolls contain the non-canonized Book of Enoch. There, Azazel is described as teaching men how to work with metal to make weapons to wage war and taught women how to ornament their bodies, i.e. paint their faces, dye their hair, etc. He revealed to people how to deceive and the secrets of black magic. So he was teaching men how to fight with metal and also doing makeovers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the ladies. Exactly. Azazel eye for the straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. And that is from the book of Enoch, chapter 10, verse 8. So did anyone ever play Azazel? Yeah. Who? Freddie Lane, the LAI demon. Oh, that's Azazel. Yeah. Got it, got it, play, got it. Okay. Fred, Frederick Lane plays the LOI demon. That's Azazel. Right. So, But this is the first time we hear that his name is actually Azazel. Yeah. We used to think it was yellow. Azazizio. We used to think it was yellow-eyed, <laughs> last name demon. Right. Demon, comma, yellow-eyed. Uh, it's actually Azazel. Doesn't say that on the form, sir. Um, <laughs> this is the DMV. I know. Look, I'm Not the born, Old Testament. I was born yellow-eyed demon, but everyone calls me Azazel. That's but well, you're going to have to bring in a phone uh, phone bill or a gas bill or something that says Azazel on it, sir, otherwise I can't confirm your identity. Everyone knows me. I go into the bar. Sir, your mailing, your mailing address, at one point it says hell, now it says Devil's Gate, Wyoming. They have to overlap and be exactly the same, sir, or I can't confirm your address, and I can't confirm your name. I'm not giving you a driver's license. So come yes. back when you have the documentation you need. Next. Look at the side of my Civic. It's speaking of Azazel. All right, fine. <laughs> Are you ready I'll for food facts? In, it'd be funny if I could say something. I see you in hell. Sir, I'm already there. This is the DMV. <laughs> Good luck making it worse. Um, all right, fun facts. Fun facts! Fun facts! So fun! So fact. There are two possible pop culture sources for the title of the episode. Sin City is a comic book by Frank Miller. Sure is. That's Turned a, into a movie years later. That's true. Uh, Rick Gomez is in that movie. Is he really? Yeah. I saw that movie. And it was good. It's also the name of the 1978 ACDC song. But don't we think it also could just be from the reference of Vegas being called Sin City? Maybe. But with this with this show, I think it's the ACDC song. So sing a, sing a verse because I don't know the song. Sin City! It's a sin. It's a city. I don't I've never heard this. Uh oh. <laughs> I thought that was real. Like, bro. Bon Scott really phoned it in for the lyrics on this. ACDC, I'm sure it's something like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of the names of these episodes are rock song titles. Right, good point. One of the original victims' names is Tony Perkins. Anthony Perkins, who went by Tony to his cool Hollywood friends, played Norman Bates in the original Alfred Hitchcock horror classic Psycho in 1960. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the music that played behind the stabbing. Yeah, no, cut in there, uh, yeah. What's funny is that on Zoom, when you make that noise, it, it mutes you out. Are you hearing him do the... Yeah, it's weird. Oh, really? I can hear myself. Yeah, well, and we'll hear it on your recording, but for us, you just went... Um, <laughs> well, you do it. You make the noise, see what it does. Well, I muted you out. It did? It must think it's feedback or something. Uh, um, huh, I was going to make a joke. That's it's uh, The timing's off now. But you said to Anthony Perkins, who went by Tony, played Norman Bates, who went by Norm. Uh, would it work? In the <laughs> would it work? It's not going to work now. Would it work? If I say, would, it work? would it work? That's comedy. <laughs> Comedy's about timing. <laughs> That's a lesson for everybody, uh, you know, comedians uh, uh, in the listening pool. Well, that's how not to make a joke. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Uh, all right, the bar set from the Magnificent Seven was reworked uh, to become the bar in Sin City. Huh, same bar. Wow, trippy. No way. Yeah, Magnificent Seven, the movie or, or the Supernatural episode named the Magnificent Seven? It must be, I don't know. Is was, there a Supernatural episode called Magnificent Seven? I don't know. There, yeah, episode they, 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 
It has to be a reference to that. There's no way they took the old, the old classic Yul Brenner movie. <laughs> just <laughs> dusted it off. Not only that, but they're like destroying Hollywood memorabilia to make it. You notice when Sasha, Sasha like put a drink down on the bar and all this dust like. <laughs> no, I don't remember. That's ridiculous. Okay. So it's from the episode of Supernatural called The Magnificent Seven. That bar set was reconfigured to become the bar in Sin City. That all makes sense now. Yeah, and they did that a lot. They did a lot, a lot of reworking uh, sets. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I constantly wait. Wait till you get to my first episode. I constantly see my apartment or house. I mean, is in other sets. You know. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's like everybody's that's home. That's my. That's my house. The idea for this episode was inspired by the films Enemy Mine, which stars Louis Gossett Jr. and Dennis Quaid. The father of Jack Quaid from The Boys. I really love that movie. I remember when I was younger. Yeah, me too. And Hell in the Pacific. I'm not familiar with that film. Where two enemies are trapped together and form a bond. Mm. That's awesome. Hell in the Pacific is probably an American soldier and Japanese soldier stuck together. Would be my guess. I think you're right. That probably is what Hell in the Pacific is about. And probably a darn fine movie. Go check it out if you're a war movie buff. Now... This was a great episode. I mean, we had a fun time talking about it. It's really well done. Uh, Sasha Barrese was a great guest and a wonderful person to talk to and had wonderful reflections of her time on the show. And then we got to do the live streaming review and summary. And that was awesome. So it was great. Thank you, Patreon folks, for being a part of that. If you were not a part of that and want to be a part of that, by golly, go over and become part of our Patreon family. We post video clips, we post photos, we post all kinds of neat stuff, and you get the opportunity to be part of our live stream. So join hey, today. There's still people out there that don't know that this podcast exists. So tell your friends. Tell spread your, the word. Yeah. Spread the word about this podcast. And, uh, you know, it's never too late to uh, start listening. We've got 15 seasons to get through. Right. And all all the episodes we've already done, well, they, they're up there on on Apple or wherever you get your podcast. So go to listen, Spotify, you name it. They're all there. So go start at the beginning, catch up and listen along with us, won't you? We will see you next time. Yes, we will. This episode of Supernatural features Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester and Jensen Ackles as Dean Winchester. Guest stars include Katie Cassidy, Jim Beaver, Sasha Barrese, Robert Curtis Brown, Don S. Davis, and Martin Papazian. Sin City was written by Robert Singer and Jeremy Carver. And it was directed by Charles Beeson. Editing by Anthony Pinker. Music by Jay Greska. Executive produced by Eric Kripke and Robert Singer. The original broadcast of this episode featured the following songs. Run Through the Jungle by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Bad Seed by Brimstone Howl. Nikki by Sasquatch. And Did You See It by Mother Superior. This episode originally aired on October 25th, 2007. This episode of Supernatural Then and Now was hosted and executive produced by Richard Spade Jr. and Rob Benedict. Produced by Stephen Hine, written by Stephen Hine and Heida Holscher. And edited and associate produced by Trey Booty. But what's up, buddy? Music provided by Tim Wynn. This episode was recorded with the help of Sonic Fuel Studios. The podcast is from Story Mill Media. Follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter, won't you? At SPN Then and Now. And become a member of the podcast at www.patreon.com slash SPN then and now. Oh man, so nice to hear you say it correctly. So surprising to hear you say it correctly. I learned something. He's usually like a Zazazel. I think it's said I think it's an Azazel. Az is Lizzo. This is the first time you heard the name Azazazizo. Lizzo. Um, okay. <laughs> a sting of violent deaths. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, even knowing we're going live, Steve Hine is the king of typos. <laughs> God bless him. Sam discovers <laughs> who who Azazel was, uh, that all demons believe in Lucifer as a higher who, power. Who who was? Azazel. <laughs> I skipped over it because I, I just kind of rolled through it, th- hoping you, you, it was right. I know you're like, who Azazel was? Azazel was. I think well, it's Azazel. Oh, Azazel. Are they doing Azazel now? It used to be Azazel back in the day. <laughs> is it Azazel? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's Bethton or is it a little? I'm seeing stuff? somebody say Rich has it right, and that's true for a lot of things. So thank you, okay. Helen. Rich is Azazel. Right. Azazel. Who, okay, well, his friends call him Azazel, Azazel, but Azazel. Wow.
Why am oh, I? What? Look what? at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why am I? Why am I? Why am I in the Invisible Man? Oh, it's just All so right. cold. I'll go with it. Ooh. Oh wait, where? I, I, I like I like being by the fire. Who did that? Go back and do it again. I don't know why that happened. That was awesome. So yeah, um, <laughs> I I, I, <laughs> uh, I agree. Um, I agree with all that. I um, what? Well, no, you, all I got cut off. The point is, I just I miss our I miss our roaring fire. Like, I, how did that even happen? Well, now I'm freezing, and Ooh. now I'm visible. <laughs> anyway, for people who aren't on the Patreon, they just uh, well, I guess. I'm not. I wouldn't be talking to anybody who's on the Patreon. But the point is, that was cool. We just got a graphic where Rob and I were sitting side by side by an outdoor fire. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, um, I know it's you. It's you skiing with Zombie Rich. Oh, I was going to. Was weird. You. What was weird is there was a big bench, and I'm right next to you. Like I could have <laughs> scooted over and allowed you some space. Nah, you like a little rich warmth. I know. I know you. Um, I was over on my side, by the way, in case anybody's looking. I was safely on my side of the right. ski lift. Right. Just, and your booty was all over next to well, mine up in my you, grill piece. So. You could have gone to the bathroom and taken off your blue man group makeup. <laughs> that answers the question for everybody. Who's more aggressive to the other one? It's Rob. Well, that's true. In oh, wow. In Judaism, Azazel was a goat cursed to carry the shit from the shin. <laughs> First to carry the sins of Jews and was cast out into the desert. Yom Kippur. It'd be, it'd be really trippy if the goat had to carry the shins of the Jews. Like, they're just the shin bone of the <laughs> Jewish people. Man. Try that again with a straight face. Because it would be fun to have you and be fun for fans. Rich isn't it in Mil- Milbray? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, we always joke this right off the, it's in Milbray. That's really close. Yeah. Oh, cool. They call it the San Francisco con, but it's like that whenever they're like, it's the New Jersey con. <laughs> it's Cherry yeah. Hill. You know, it's, it's not really Jersey. It's it's yeah. the adjacent con. You know? And and Milbray is right next it's to right a chocolate there. factory, so it smells like chocolate. Oh. Yeah, Milbray does smell like chocolate. That we know. Story Mill Media.